I'm uh, Johan Six and I'm a professor at ETH Zurich and I lead there the group in uh, sustainable agroecosystems. RunRes is uh, it's a, it's a multidisciplinary uh, project. Um, it's funded by the, the Swiss Development Corporation um, and they, they are a full partner uh, with us. Um, and so we uh, work across four different countries. Mm -hmm. So it's in, in Ethiopia, um, the DRC, South Africa, and then also Rwanda. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and obviously we have also a team at, in, in Switzerland. Um, and so the focus of the, the project is really trying to uh, establish a circular economy uh, based on nutrients yes. um, in in four different city regions. Mm -hmm. So we have the the city region of of here, uh, Kamoni mm -hmm. in Rwanda, yes. and then also in Bukavu, the DRC, in Arba Minch, uh, Ethiopia, and in um, Muzanduzi in South Africa. Okay. Yeah. And so we we are really trying to basically, you know, there's a lot of waste in in the cities yes. in these city regions uh, on the one hand but at, on the other hand we also know that in many of these regions there is a decline in soil fertility mm -hmm. because nutrients are just being mined by plants you know by by our agriculture mm -hmm. and all of those nutrients that are in the in the food yes. go to the city and then there it accumulates as waste and so what we are trying to do now is basically get this waste transformed into a resource that can be applied again back in in the agriculture but also actually really focus on on how this food um, you know goes from the rural to the urban um, I mean tr here in Africa traditionally that goes from production to trading to consumption and we're also looking into how can we improve the processing so that we have food being um, processed in, and, and can be, become longer viable yeah. uh, and not as easily perishable and, and as we're doing that processing then there's also waste and so how can we capture that waste and bring it back to um, into agriculture. It, I mean, it's really trying to go away from that linear, uh, you know, as I said, most of the time we go really from production to maybe some processing, trading, and then consumption, mm -hmm. which is a very linear economy. Yeah. You know, it's, an, it's a linear model. And so what we're trying to do now in, with this circular economy is basically bringing it back to where it started, but based on economics, mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, you know, having it coming back and, and being in a, a purely a public uh, burden, but effectively build an economy around that that, that provides um, employment, first of all, uh, especially to youth and, and women, but also that there is effectively a private uh, industry that is, is involved in this, mm -hmm. private companies that, that can make uh, money out of this and so that it, it doesn't become a pure uh, public um, burden but and so we're talking really a lot about uh, public-private partnerships uh, to build an economy uh, around that circling of, of nutrients. So I mean there, there, there's, it's a bit twofold mm -hmm. it is in, in the one hand on the one hand um, we, when we talk about food waste, then indeed it's in the most in the developed world that we, we have a lot of food waste at the level of the kitchen. Yeah. However, when we look at Africa, there's a lot of food waste also uh, happening, but more in the post-harvest mm -hmm. um, part of the food chain. And that's, for example, why it's very important to do this processing so that we can turn uh, fresh food into something that can be maintained longer and that can effectively be traded and, and kept for a longer time. Mm -hmm. So this processing really has to happen in order to reduce the post-harvest yeah. losses. Okay. 
at the same time, um, what we see also is that the urbanization, I mean, it is big in the developed world, but especially here in Africa, I mean, the urbanization is becoming, I mean, is really increasing. It's booming, yeah. and, the, and the predictions are, are enormous of how much urbanization uh, will happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so this, this will only in the future become more and more an issue of how do we deal with all that waste that is accumulating in these urban regions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in many ways it's also because of the, in the urban regions a lot of it is informal settlement that is happening, mm -hmm. where there is no sanitation system. And, and so that's why we also talk a lot about the human waste. So yes. not only about uh, food waste, organic waste, but also about human waste. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where there's still a lot of work also in Africa. The sanitation systems are not always very, I mean, are not very well developed. And so there's a lot of human waste that just goes into the environment. Meanwhile, it also has a lot of nutrients that could actually be brought back to, to agriculture. Mm -hmm. enthusiastic about the about the opportuni opportunity opportunity yeah. um, but at the same time you know they also uh, communicated some challenges to yeah. us yeah. and and so it also gave a very good sense of, of yeah what do we have to do next uh, in order to really make these these transdisciplinary mm -hmm. uh, innovation platforms successful and 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 actually be, become ready to then be scaled up because that's actually the next phase that we really want to go into is is once we have tested you know now we're basically kind of in the pilot mm -hmm. phase and once we see you know how good they are and, and and if they are viable then we we want to obviously scale that up and so there was already quite a bit of talk about you know how, what what is needed so that we can effectively start scaling this up So, I mean, I think for many of our innovations, there, there is actually um, quite a bit of uh, a place for the, for the government. Um, so, especially when it comes to like some of the sanitation with the human waste, um, there's also actually when we have composting materials. I mean, policies are very important. Um, and, and so, there is a, there's definitely a space for these, what I, call, what I said, these public-private partnerships. Yeah. Um, that that can make it happen because m m lots of these products that that we um, or I should say some of the products that are that we are now developing um, they they are not uh, completely economically viable uh -huh. uh, you know purely by themselves so th there is a, a support that that needs to be there in order to um, really really make it uh, feasible and 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 viable uh -huh. So I see a lot of potential actually for uh, the government to come into play. And that's why we now in the scaling, if we, once we start thinking more about scaling it up, that we really want to get um, also government involved, yeah. the public sector involved. I mean, it, the last word is actually what really matters uh, yeah. is, you know, because obviously this waste is, is accumulating in the environment. Um, it's leading to, you know, many problems, uh, not the least health. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, especially if we're talking about, uh, I mean, actually the organic waste, but also the, then especially this, the human waste. I mean, if we have open defecation happening, uh, you know, this obviously is leading to a lot of, of uh, health uh, problems. Um, even the, you know, the pit latrines, uh, I mean, there are issues associated with it. So we, it, as, an, as a lay person, I think it's, it's very important to, to start realizing actually that, that we, are part, we are part of the problem of how our environment is starting to degrade mm -hmm. and, and that we, um, you know, have to play our role as a consumer in, in making that system different and making it more circular 
so that we don't have these, these associated uh, problems. But that's also why it's you know, so quite important to realize that, that a lot of the costs that we have now with our food system mm -hmm. are in many ways externalized. And, and that's why we actually have to now internalize these costs um, because th if we want to move forward, then we will have to account for the true cost uh, of, of that waste. Um, and, and if we can then turn it, instead of being a cost, into a resource that can be used, um, then, then we can really make a step forward. I mean, I think indeed th this is where, uh, you know, the project is in, in its infancy and we are still trying to figure it out all, uh, all for b how we can really make a business out of it. But there are clear indications already that, that indeed, you know, some of this waste can be valorized and, and can really lead to, um, you know, a profit, uh, employment. And, and I think the best way to explain it is, is you know, the one example that we saw, uh, one of the examples we saw yesterday, is where you know the, there was there's a, this woman that has a um, cassava processing uh, facility, and she was having all these cassava peels mm -hmm. just lying around on her field, um, you know, by her by her processing facility, mm -hmm. um, basically doing nothing, hoping for people to come and and take some of it, um, and now she has a way of actually valorizing that into a, a product for animal feed and and so instead of her having a pile of waste by her processing facility now she's actually having a product more that can be sold mm -hmm. and and from which she can make some profit so it, it really is a nice example of how waste can be turned into something that is actually of value and 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 she is able to employ you know some some people mm -hmm. and she's making a profit out of it i mean that's where i think it, it comes back to what you asked uh, before and that is that that you know people should realize that this waste accumulation is going to be a problem and it's only going to become more and and so that they they have a role to be played in it and and so that's where i think indeed that there's there's some behavioral change that has to happen um, i mean you saw it yesterday too for example when it comes to if we really want to valorize uh, some of these these waste uh, resources then then we have to have a split of you know we have to have really organic waste separated from inorganic waste and so that's where you know people have to start realizing okay if i want to play a role in in making it that we can set up the circular economy then i have to take responsibility at home and and separate my organic waste from my inorganic waste and and then i can help and so that's where there's a behavioral change that needs to happen in the household.